Now, an extremely regular talking point in people learning about the Imperium that I often see consists of either why doesn't the Imperium invent or research new technology. Of course, the classic why doesn't the Imperium also just reverse engineer the technology they have, they should be able to do this because of blah 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 blah. The thing is, it isn't the case that no attempts have been made to push forward technology or even for research to occur. This has happened in multiple instances throughout the Imperium's history, usually by rogue Mechanicus or covert individuals. The most notable of recent times is very obviously Belisarius Call walking an extremely thin line when it comes to techno heresy. This has been tolerated because of the benefits and necessity of his actions. Others though usually meet with untimely ends or just plain death. There's definitely questions to be asked when it comes to different technologies about where or when they were implemented. For example, there's curious questions to do with Krieg and of course their sort of their production method for people there and how that happens, the birthing methods that we talked about recently. At what point did that come in? How did they have the knowledge to do that when other places do not and so on and so on. So there's a lot of clouded muddy water when it comes to sort of where technology can originate from, whether it's present there on different worlds at different times. There's a lot of different aspects going on. Many struggle to understand why it is that humanity in the dark future that is the galaxy spanning empire of the Imperium of Man seems to actively work against itself to hamstring its own progression and future stability or how it can be that they are unable to really progress in terms of learning and is often said reverse engineer machines. Why doesn't the Imperium seem capable or willing to enact say state sanctioned research and development programs? Well the reasons and origins of this trace back to the period known as the age of strife. This is really the core of all of this and this was the time where the entire galaxy was cut off from interstellar travel as warp storms made traversing through warp space impossible. It led to most planets in the federation of mankind as it was at the time suffering from a complete collapse of civilized order. Mass rioting and in general a downward spiral that would lead to post-apocalyptic survival situations where the few who remained did so by a process of survival of the fittest. And it's also worth remembering that Prior to this, humanity had suffered massive devastation during its war with its artificial creations, the Men of Iron. This is always an important contributing factor that people don't often consider around the Age of Strife. It is not that just the Age of Strife happened, planets were cut off and they were unable to survive. A lot of humanity had already suffered incredible devastation during the war with the Men of Iron and then they got hit with the Age of Strife on top of that. Now if you want to learn more about that in detail, please see my video on the STCs, the Gold, Iron and Stone Men that's linked down below. Now the consequences of both these events would be that the pool of humans who had any advanced knowledge of technology at the end of the Age of Strife would be extremely limited. In fact it's unknown even just how much true working knowledge mankind had retained even prior to the Age of Strife because mankind had during this age become heavily reliant on AI and machines, that's the Dark Age or the Golden Age. It's a strong possibility that a large percentage, if not the majority of humankind, were very widely ignorant or that they lived in very advanced but perhaps highly compartmentalized societies, not that dissimilar to today in fact, where individuals served very specific functions because of the very advanced nature of the technology. People are only really capable of doing so much and so that's why you end up in these very compartmentalized roles. So due to the extreme advancement of technology when humanity reached out to colonize the galaxy, machines known as STCs were created. These were both vast databases of information, the sum total of humanity's knowledge, but also a system which could fabricate whatever colonists needed with minimal working knowledge of whatever they required. Now again, if you want to learn more about that, go watch my STC video, because it gets pretty complicated and it's also, again, very blurry and vague. Now the basic point here is that even prior to the cataclysm that was the Age of Strife where warp storms and warp creature incursions through human proto psychers ravaged the worlds of humanity all across the galaxy, humanity had already been crippled as I say in terms of its understanding of science and technology. Now to just what degree we cannot truly know, but it's certainly reasonable to assume that it was already diminished and then suffered even worse deterioration. Now despite the Age of Strife, some worlds fared better than others. This would often be the case if planets existed in a system where nearby worlds which provided resources were able to reach each other by sublight travel within a reasonable distance, making it somewhat more feasible for them to continue maintaining their existence. And again, some worlds may have had more or less psychers present on them, and again that would also have an impact. Some also may not have been so heavily damaged and escaped from the war with the Men of Iron, and we know that some even had functioning and intact STCs, 
Whether these STCs had their AI functionality just disabled or it was not a problem is relatively unknown, but undoubtedly the wealth of knowledge that this provided them with gave them great power and resources to maintain and protect their society. However, the depressing fact of the matter is that during the Great Crusade of the Emperor and later the Heresy, Schism of Mars, some if not much of this knowledge would be lost or destroyed once again as a result of the destructive scale of the operations. We know that the Imperium and the Mechanicus search far and wide for potential fragments of STC data to enable them to construct new machines or new revelations that could benefit mankind. But this is only seeking out existing information, it's not creating or developing new things based on research or real science. And this is the primary reason why humanity in the Imperium has existed in a state of complete stagnation for the better part of 10,000 years. So why is this the case? Why doesn't the Imperium or the Mechanicus spend time researching to develop new technology? Why don't they reverse engineer things and use that information to build new machines, scientific discoveries, weapons? Well, the reasons for this are twofold. And the first is the ideology of the Mechanicus and the Imperium. And secondly, it's just pure ignorance. So to explain this, let's break down a short timeline that has led us to the modern Imperium. So during the Dark Age of Technology, the Golden Age of Man, the humans who built the first hive worlds on Mars were originally not part of any cult Mechanicus, Mechanicum or any such organisation. Mars before the Age of Strife had just been another human colony world, but it was one which had gradually become as powerful as humanity's homeworld through its production of technology. It was also entirely separated as an individual society and had been terraformed by the advanced knowledge mankind possessed during this era. In fact, it was synonymous with technical expertise, research and scientific advancement. During the Age of Strife, Mars, like everywhere else, suffered from a complete collapse of civilised order, as was happening all across the galaxy. But on Mars, things deteriorated very quickly, as was the case everywhere, and the most common cause of this was initially lack of food, breakdown in systems, basic infrastructure, and again mirroring millions of other worlds, factions would form who would then compete for resources and scavenged materials. Mars though had additional concerns, because their atmospheric radiation shielding had been damaged and or lost. The planet would then suffer from severe solar radiation, which then killed or heavily damaged the DNA of large quantities of the population, as well as obliterating any remaining fertile ground and flora. The survivors were driven into the underground forges to escape the damaging effects of the radiation, which led to high importance being placed upon the expert technicians. And these would later come to be known as the Tech Priests of Mars, as the survivors devolved into the pseudo-religious worship of technology. And it's possible that due to the severe damage of the soda radiation, this was initially what caused them to begin replacing their body parts with mechanical, artificial alternatives. And that it was this original practical necessity that would later develop into the religious belief of the cult that the worth of a single man is only the sum of his knowledge. His body is simply an organic machine capable of preserving intellect. Given the situation that was facing the humans trying to cling on to their very survival, the origins of the cult of the machine seem very obvious. Of course, there was also the potential proximity to the entity known as the Void Dragon, but how much that was involved or what it means is very much unknown. And as we know, the faction that would ultimately emerge victorious from this time would become known as the Mechanicum. Now later, after the events of the Horus Heresy, it would be divided and become the Cult Mechanicus. As a side note, interestingly on Mars, the Mechanicum had developed actually a democratic parliamentary system, unlike most others in the dark future where more medieval systems had seemingly taken control of societies. However, the important thing for us to take away from this period is that humanity collectively had lost its most valuable commodity. Its collective knowledge had been absolutely obliterated. It's not an exaggeration to say that many planets were thrown back into the Stone Age in terms of their actual understanding of science. And other than the Emperor and some of his own scientists, as well as a few sparse human colonies who were themselves perhaps leftovers from the Dark Age of Technology, and who yes was very civilised and seemingly had advanced technology, but without the men of iron and stone were not really able to push things forward. For example, we know that it seems likely that during the Golden Age, it was the AI creations of mankind who created other machines, other advanced machines, and the technical knowledge of just how to do such things could be well beyond the comprehension of even humans of the Golden Age. And I've speculated before that this itself could be a contributing factor which led to the war with the men of iron and the downfall of mankind, that basically humans were seen as being subsidiary and unnecessary. And to a degree, this is not unlike how the Mechanicus 
actually view the majority of humans. Now, regardless, after the Age of Strife, other than the aforementioned, it was really only the Mechanicus who held anything that you might call a solid understanding of science and technology. One of the most well known to emerge from the Mechanicus is the complex figure of Belisarius Core. Now he is one of the few who believes in innovation and not simply maintaining or using existing STC designs to modify and reconfigure hardware. However, it is worth clarifying something that I could imagine would easily become a point of confusion or contradiction in regards to Call. Now within the Codex Mechanicus, it is stated that it was Call who is believed to have created the Astartes Black Carapace. This is the means by which Astartes were able to interact via bioplugs embedded in their flesh with all types of armour. However, this was recently clarified further in the novel The Great Work, which delves into the original creation process of the Astartes, and that it was other scientists, notably Amar or Amar, Astarte and Ezekiel Sedain, who were truly the scientists who worked with the Emperor. In a sense, it is also Belisarius Call who was responsible in that it was Sedain who was desperate to extend his life in the pursuit of knowledge, merging his consciousness with Call. Sedain now remains part of Call in his suppressed subconsciousness. It's a bit complicated and I'm getting dangerously off topic here, but anyway. The point is that the Mechanicus are largely speaking the only contingent of the Imperium who understand how to build and maintain advanced technology. Except that when we say build, this is more akin to constructing a Lego kit, than actually knowing intricately each process or the actual science of why something is doing whatever it is. So this places us at a point where we should be asking, just how much does humanity generally know in the 41st millennium, in terms of science or indeed just general education? This is a difficult question. Throughout the galaxy there are planets which are feudal, basically medieval levels of society that may be governed by orbiting platforms. There are worlds which are pre-industrial, post-industrial, and even it's said some 21st century levels of living. Although to be clear, I've never really seen that expressed or described anywhere very specifically, and it's difficult to imagine what shape that would take. That's probably a thought for expanding on another video. And then we have the other Imperial world types that we've covered before, you know, garden, fortress, hive, forge, and so on. Generally speaking though, it's the norm that your general citizenry have extremely basic levels of education. And again, this is probably along the lines of the 19th century here, so most Imperial citizens probably struggle to read or write anything complex, some maybe not at all, and for many, their day-to-day -day lives are just going to be too exhausting and not really require such things. There's most certainly no centralised education system or anything like this, and again, this could vary from world to world, however, it does reach into the fairly dystopian nature of the Imperium, and it has to be asked how intentional this is, or if it's just not a priority for them. Now if you've ever read 1984, or maybe seen the movie, you'll know that one of the core themes is about suppressing citizens' ability to question the state, or really develop any thoughts for themselves by gradually erasing people's ability to use what we would consider language. Now in 1984, the citizenry used what's called new speak, as opposed to old speak. And new speak is essentially a state-sanctioned language designed to destroy the more creative, emotive, and free-thinking old speak language. It's to ensure that people are not thinking or able to voice any thoughts that would go against the state. And the true goal, of course, for the state in 1984 is to control the language and therefore control the citizenry by gradually reducing the vocabulary, removing words, removing verbs, adjectives, synonyms, it dumbs down the language. The end goal of this is to limit people's ability to think for themselves, to erase individuality and rely completely on what the state tells them to do and think. And this extract here highlights this. Don't you see that the whole aim of Newspeak is to narrow the range of thought? In the end, we shall make thought crime literally impossible, because there will be no words in which to express it. Every concept that can ever be needed will be expressed by exactly one word, with its meaning rigidly defined and all its subsidiary meanings rubbed out and forgotten. Now the book also expands and gives us a vision of how the state imagines its slow dulling of people's ability to converse, to share ideas, to educate, and to think about really anything in an expansive or creative way. Their goal is the complete destruction of literature and that as they forcibly change language and thought, their own party propaganda will also adapt to fit people's ability to understand such things to ensure that for most common people that deterioration continues. And this other extract highlights that. The literature of the party will change. Even the slogans will change. How could you have a slogan like freedom is slavery when the concept of freedom has been abolished? The whole climate of thought will be different. In fact, there will be no thought as we understand it now. 
Now I could go on and on about 1984, but I wanted to just illustrate the concept of what could occur when you have deliberately undereducated your citizenry. Now what does this have to do with learning and technology within the Imperium? Well, all the figures in 40k literature are seen as speaking English. If we were to literally hear the characters from 40k speaking their own languages, they would be completely incomprehensible to us. And this is an important point when it comes to, again, the issues surrounding technology and learning. Because if you cannot even understand the writing or language of those who create it or any schematics that you may discover it's going to be very very hard to claw back that ancient knowledge you see in terms of stcs while they were designed to enable humans of the time to understand how to build things and use the technology this would have all been written and recorded in what is called high gothic and that's a language not spoken by the vast majority of imperial citizens the imperium generally speaking has two core languages low gothic and high gothic now, High Gothic is a highly advanced language. It's regarded as being holy, and it was the language spoken by the Emperor of Man himself. And it's something akin to a mixture of Latin and French with a degree of scientific terminology thrown in. Now, High Gothic was the universally accepted language of written record up until the Age of Strife. However, in the 41st millennium, very few humans would be able to understand it at all. It's usually only understood by high-ranking imperial officials, such as tech priests of the Mechanicus, adepts of the Administratum, Ecclesiarchy, Inquisitors, perhaps hive nobles, and so on. Basically, ranking officials who would have a need to understand such things. Astartes would also have an understanding of this, but likely this is not the case for the other military forces of the Imperium who are more concerned with actual military operation, save for perhaps, again, Sisters of Battle and the Ecclesiarchy because they have a need to learn such things for their religious purposes. For most more standard military operators, they would more likely just bring along with them an Inquisitor and a Tech Priest. The more common language spoken throughout the Imperium is Low Gothic. Now this is a vastly more simplified and highly bastardized version of High Gothic. Unsurprisingly, this varies from system to system, so even within the Imperium, because there's no centralized kind of order in the Imperium, there's no truly universal version of Low Gothic. So some may have difficulty from region to region understanding such things, elements of it will largely be understood, but specifics are lost in translation. It will also usually have localized languages that have developed over millennia, originating out of the Age of Strife. Now, the reason why all this stuff about language is important is because similarly to 1984, once language has degraded as it has in Low Gothic to a certain degree, while in the Imperium there is no obvious evidence that this degradation was a deliberate process, quite the opposite in fact, the effect has been largely the same. In 1984 the goal of the state is to dumb down people's ability to converse, and by reducing vocabulary they are unable to express and comprehend certain concepts. Now this is basically the situation within the Imperium, although not to such a severe degree. This is not helped at all by most Imperial citizens not having any kind of formal education. Their general understanding of almost anything we would consider to be science is just non-existent. They likely only receive concepts about the world they live in via state propaganda and religious worship via the ecclesiarchy, so being preached to, essentially. Much like medieval Earth where the church was the main method by which concepts about how our world worked would have been dictated. So if someone who spoke High Gothic wanted to explain to someone in the lower dialect how something like genetics or powering starship engines was achieved, it's not just a case of having to translate it. In fact, you probably couldn't translate it. And this is the problem, because the corresponding words would not exist within the lower dialect. And you can't translate something clearly if the words do not even exist there to be able to properly explain it. And this is then only made worse by the complete lack of education, meaning if you were somehow able to get people to understand those words that you were translating for them, it would still be meaningless. And this is a really major problem in terms of expecting ordinary citizens to somehow be able to do anything that you would think of as research and so on. I mean, it's not impossible that on some world somewhere, maybe there's a hive noble or whatever who's really highly into researching old tech, but nobles are usually more more concerned with things like murdering their own family members and ensuring that they maintain their comfortable lives. However, you could envisage something akin to, say, a Victor Frankenstein-like figure in a hive city. I guess that's possible. But for most citizens of the Imperium, their understanding of how to build and make things and technology would be like asking a child to build some very advanced piece of tech from scratch. They wouldn't even know how to find the basic materials, forget about the processes required, the assembly, the advanced coding, specific scientific processes required to activate and run it, on top of that how to power it. So in terms of your citizenry, it's just a non-starter in all respects. So the Mechanicus are the guardians of humanity's knowledge, but why don't they innovate and push things forward? Well again, this comes back to the Age of Strife. 
Now, during the Age of Strife, the technicians of Mars transitioned from being engineers to being these priests, tech priests. They were part of this cult which developed as a result of the cataclysmic civil war taking place around instead of seeking to understand technology, but to worship it. Now it's true of course to say that the Adeptus Mechanicus strive to gather new technology, they quest for it, if you will. However, that quest for knowledge and technology probably does not take the form that you might imagine it would. The Mechanicus do not seek knowledge through research or reverse engineering and so on. They seek it through standard template constructs or fragments of such. Again, the simple concept of an STC is that it is a system which contains all of humanity's knowledge, except that when this system was originally utilized, the colonists did not really require the kind of tech that is used now. What the Mechanicus search for are hard copies of data from the STC systems, because most actual STC systems as they were originally used are corrupted beyond use or just outright destroyed. So the hard copy templates are all that remain. Now the importance of STCs cannot be understated. In fact, STCs are so valued that even Xenos like the Eldar will seek out human STC just as much as humanity because of how advanced human civilization was during the Golden Age. So gathering knowledge is good, it gives more information and more potential for developing new tech. So the trouble comes instead from the fact that the Mechanicus, the cult of the machine, view knowledge as the supreme manifestation of divinity. All creatures and artifacts that embody knowledge are holy. So for the Mechanicus, the Emperor himself is this supreme object of their worship, as they view him as being what they refer to as the Omnissiah. And this is because of his seemingly limitless knowledge of technology and his ability to apparently fix things just by a touch. And that points perhaps to again what we know from the advanced systems of the Golden Age, and that they may well have had systems that operated with some degree of biointegration that is way beyond our comprehension. The Emperor, as someone who passed through the Golden Age, certainly could have had access or party to this advanced technology. Although the question always arises, why didn't the Emperor do more to safeguard the technology of the Golden Age? Why didn't he create some vaults somewhere with functioning STCs etc? These are the obvious questions that have no answers. Was he unable to see what was coming? Did he feel that that was not the right way to go? Nobody knows. So as a result of these beliefs, the Mechanicus view a human only by the sum of their knowledge. And this is the core thing to understand about the Mechanicus. To them, knowledge is all. The body is merely an organic machine that supports and contains that knowledge. And this is why the Mechanicus have no issues whatsoever in extreme body modifications designed to extend their lives into the millennia because doing so prevents that loss of holy knowledge, and this is the most important thing. Some Mechanicus will even involve themselves in merging of their minds to again extend life. This is reminiscent of the themes and ideas from something like Ghost in the Shell. These ideas about consciousness and individuals merging to become something greater, housed within artificial bodies with life potentially extending to a limitless degree. This is one of the reasons why servitors are a thing. The Mechanicus just have no qualms or emotions or concerns at all about modifying and using humans as machine tools because they do not have any respect for human individuality. If you have no knowledge or you're not seeking some higher purpose or function, then you are simply an organic machine and nothing more. And you can be adapted and carved up for use just like any other machine. It's actually pretty disturbing and terrifying. And again, this might be a detail about the Mechanicus that I think is often lost. And this isn't to say just for clarity that the Mechanicus go around just murdering people at random, but they certainly view humans with complete emotionless apathy. And they certainly wouldn't blink an eye at using some pleb imperial citizen if it was required to achieve some process in their unending quest for knowledge. Now when it comes to STC fragments or the rarity of intact STC patterns, the Mechanicus view these as reflections of the will and the divinity of the Machine God. They consider STC designs as being the purest form of knowledge, and as such, they absolutely must not be distorted at a base level. And this includes things like reverse engineering, even if they were capable of doing such a thing, which they generally are not able to do. Now again, as always, things do get a little muddy here, because most Mechanicus would consider any changes to any STC design as techno-heresy. It's an unthinkable concept for them, to consider changing a holy design of the machine god. Research of such things in and of itself is seen as extremely suspect and actively discouraged. And this is because they also believe that all knowledge already exists out in the galaxy. 
it's not necessary to engage in research because the information is out there already waiting to be found. And then you also have what is referred to as black tech. This is knowledge which is deemed to either be too advanced or too dangerous to be used in any way. It would most likely be judged by high-ranking Mechanicus and then archived. A good example of this would be something like AI. AI is deemed far too dangerous to be used in any fashion, or at least that's the official line. In reality, a lot of things in the Imperium still use AI but it's a very much more basic AI that still requires human input. Or in the case of something like the Mechanicus's Castellan robots, they use a variety of wetware. You then have the case also of Titans and having a human pilot, the Princeps, to connect with and operate with the Titans machine spirit, if you will. Black tech may also be stuff like Xenos technology that runs counter to Imperial thinking, or again, it's just considered to be unknown and way too dangerous. So anyone found to be engaging in exploratory research or even suggesting usage of black technology would likely be sentenced to immediate execution for dangerous thinking. The Mechanicus and the Imperium are generally fearful of highly advanced technology or even weapons which are more powerful than they have now. And this might seem counterintuitive, but we know that such powerful weapons do exist from encounters with various AI from the Dark Age who have already exhibited weapons of terrifying devastation that can just punch through void shields, use extreme forms of energy generation to form miniature black holes that will overlay matter essentially on top of itself in the same space and time, creating cataclysmic levels of destruction. We also know that AI from the Dark Age seem to have somehow been able to even travel through time. So it's all pretty heavy stuff, and it's tech that humanity, even as it stands now, knows was a very huge contributing factor to the near annihilation of mankind, and very heavily contributed to the severity of the Age of Strife. Now some, especially in the Inquisition, are probably also aware that there's also the very real potential for AI to be corrupted, or their thinking to be perverted by the warp and chaos, and this is another very dangerous risk. So fear alone of exploring the unknown is a very real thing for the Mechanicus and the Imperium. Now on top of this, the Imperium as it stands generally has the approach, as I recently discussed, of treating its problems with the elegant technique of blunt trauma. Why use big, potentially dangerous advanced tech when you could just throw an extra million people at your problem? Manpower and citizens are the Imperium's greatest and most easily sourced resource and solution to all their problems. So when we come to the subject of scientific or technological research, either for new things or for reverse engineering, they have absolutely no desire or apparent need to do so from the perspective of the Imperium. Experimentation, scientific development is just seen as unnecessary and has almost been fully replaced by widespread ignorance, indoctrinated faith. The need to understand in a deep sense or at a base level how or why things work is just not seen as being necessary. Although I often think that this is probably a little exaggerated in the lore because especially for the Mechanicus, the entire origin of the machine cult was around them having an existing base level of tech because otherwise the repairs that they needed to do couldn't have been made and it's often said that the operation of machines is the will of the machine god. This is why incense is a solid cure for any tech problem in 40k. But more seriously, while techs may have given the knowledge to make repairs, and that could certainly include what we consider to be scientific understanding, this doesn't mean necessarily that it would give you the knowledge to then construct a new version of that thing. And this is why if you had a piece of tech for which a template has then subsequently been lost, or for which you had no template to begin with, if it was maybe some kind of relic, is damaged beyond repair or just outright destroyed, then that technology is permanently lost. And this has unfortunately been a continuing thing in the Imperium and for the Mechanicus. Things are destroyed, the pattern is lost or just misplaced in the vast libraries of the bureaucracy, and then they just can't find it again, they can't make it again, and it's gone. Now to try and give us a simple analogy, let's take something like a car, okay? An average pleb person is going to struggle to do anything with their car, even change a wheel unbelievably. But a competent person akin to, say, you know, a guardsman in this analogy, you could probably change a battery, a wheel, you can maintain it to a degree, but little more than that. Now a car mechanic would be akin to something like a tech priest. They can perform repairs, they can trace problems, they can fix components. If you said to them, hey, build that from scratch, including all the schematics, the designs, the measurements, every process to complete a completely perfect functioning version of it, a replica, that would be very unlikely. Now, please spare me any mechanics out there who are readying to tell me how they could easily do it and blah, blah, blah. Look, even if you in theory felt you had the understanding to do so, 
you likely wouldn't be able to replicate it to the quality of the finished manufactured product because again, manufacturing requires complex machines in and of itself. So there's a whole range of other processes which have to happen. It's not just putting the stuff together or knowing the shape or the design or all of these different elements. There's a huge amount of technology and cumulative science which goes into making something that complex. And you can just scale that up in terms of technology for the Imperium. Manufacturing is no simple thing. It is very complex. Anyway, it's just a simple analogy that I'm trying to use to illustrate the point. That the Mechanicus do have an understanding of how things work and how to repair them, and they probably have a basic understanding of some of the science, but only to that basic degree, relatively speaking. It's known, of course, that some of the highest tech priests like Lord Belisarius Call have much more advanced knowledge and likely do have greater understanding of tech in general. But this is why the entire structure of the Mechanicus exists. For as much as they seek and desire to uncover new tech, it also is there to guard that knowledge because they understand the danger of letting too much knowledge out there. And this is where the comparisons with 1984 come in because the Mechanicus are likely suppressing the advancement of knowledge for both philosophical, ideological and religious reasons, but also because they understand the inherent danger in allowing technology to spread throughout the Imperium. They fear it being stolen, misused, corrupted and potentially causing another disaster that would doom humanity. They're basically holding the reins very tight. So the way in which the Mechanicus operates is very much a part of mankind's technological stagnation as much as the actual loss of knowledge itself. And it's true that some Forge Worlds will excel in producing certain Imperial munitions or hardware because central control of almost anything in the Imperium is just impossible. And so small variations in machines and so on will occur. And whilst it's true that all worlds of the Mechanicus adhere faithfully to the cult of the machine, their interpretations of specifically what that actually means may have some leeway. And this then leads to small variations in the technology taking place. And when we say that, what we're talking about is things that could be as small as just the power in a weapon being configured slightly differently, or say a tank having a different weapon mounted. We're not talking about huge revisions to the schematics here. This is tolerated because the original design is not seen as being really altered. It's more that existing knowledge is being combined, but it's still preferential if it's somewhere printed on a schematic so they can say, okay, you know, this is something which exists. It can often be a fairly loose interpretation and it's tolerated by the Mechanicus. It is what it is. And this is often why Imperial Tech is referred to as having a pattern. A good example of this is the Forge World of Riser. Riser is one of the best Forge Worlds at producing plasma weapons. And these specialist worlds likely come from just experience in production, accidents and mistakes in the production process which turned out to be positive, happy mistakes. Basically, it's probably coming from an observation of just what works better by chance than a true understanding of trying to make something work better. However, these variations can also be one example of where research does take place. But again, it's not research in the same sense that we might consider it to be research. If you imagine, say, a blueprint for a tank, on that blueprint it has various options for different weapon mountings and how you would build that. Except that on the original STC, most of these extra details were damaged or corrupted and only partially readable. So what you might find is that adepts may spend years cross-referencing these details and trying to piece together a whole picture of what was on the original template, scouring through libraries of information, trying to sort of build a picture. And if they feel they have successfully researched and uncovered a new configuration, this would be submitted to the Mechanicus Lords, who would then make the final decision on if this variation would be approved or not. And if approved, this new pattern could be rolled out and distributed to Forge Worlds throughout the Imperium. So for example, a riser pattern vehicle does not necessarily mean it was built on riser. It just means that riser is where the pattern originated from. Now another thing to consider, as I mentioned earlier, the Mechanicus, similarly to humanity in general, is highly compartmentalized. And this means that most citizens will serve a singular role, and that is all they will do for their lives. Within the Mechanicus, for most, this is a similar process. They'll be born to carry out a specific task and they must strictly carry out that task. Failure to do so would leave you being viewed essentially as a failed component and you're going to be replaced. And you can read into what they mean by replaced. Life for most on a Forge world is essentially to be a human drone. Few are going to rise to the ranks of becoming a tech priest. So whenever we begin to explore the lack of innovation in technology within the Imperium, you run up against the vast ignorance and fear of the general population. And that's stacked against the questionable goals of the Mechanicus. 
It's important to remember as well that the Mechanicus are really still a separate thing from the Imperium in many ways. Although they do sort of operate under its umbrella, the original alliance forged between the Emperor and the Mechanicum was a marriage of convenience, and it largely still is. They didn't have a huge desire to come back to the Imperium because again this goes way back to the origins of Terra and Mars as being kind of separate entities really. And because of this separation this is one of the reasons why the Mechanicus probably hoards a lot of information for itself and doesn't put it out to the Imperium. If new tech is discovered there's no guarantees that this would automatically be distributed to Forge Worlds all across the galaxy. This could be deemed as being too dangerous in air quotes and instead get archived in the Mechanicus vaults for later reference. And the true intentions of the Mechanicus leadership keeping potentially advanced tech for itself could easily be speculated on, one being that the Mechanicus, much like the Navigators, are essential to the running of the Imperium. Without them things would grind to a halt very quickly and they probably want to keep things that way or it could be more genuinely protective. Regardless though, whatever they decide to do with the tech, they know that it would largely be unable to be understood or subsequently fabricated either way, so whatever they choose to do with it is largely their own prerogative. Still, the Imperium is a big place, and as we've seen in the past and current times, there are those within the Mechanicus who do not sit within the accepted views of the cult, now Belisarius Call being the most notable. And this is largely down to Call's perception of things being very much that of the ancient days of the early Imperium. And this is partly his own view, but it's very probably exacerbated by his mental merging with Sedane. The result being that Call sees no problem with genuine scientific research and new innovations like the Call Inferior. The Call Inferior is essentially a replicated version of himself to enable Lord Gulliman to engage with him were he to be not present in urgent times or worse were he to die. The goal of course is to preserve knowledge. However, the Lord Primarch already suspects that Call's creation is in actuality a strange form of self-aware sentient AI, albeit not anything resembling other AI we've seen before, but a far more strange mix of machine and organic. If the Emperor were ever to return to the Imperium, it's likely things would change in very short order. The emergence of the Imperium brought with it entirely new designs, but often these were still based on ancient Archaea tech. In fact, even with the presence of the Emperor, not every piece of tech from the Dark Age was able to be replicated. The Imperial Fist's fortress monastery, the Phalanx, being one such example of tech which originated from the Dark Age before the Imperium and was then unable to be replicated. However, even early tech developed or at least fabricated by the Emperor during the first days of the Imperium were unable to later be reproduced by the Mechanicus. And much of this has to do with schematics likely being lost during the heresy, the division of the Mechanicum into the Loyalist Mechanicus and Dark Mechanicum, and so this loss of technology is occurring as an ongoing process, even if it was developed in the last 10,000 years as part of the Imperium. But on the other hand, there is more forward progress for the Imperium in the past centuries than there has been in the previous 10 millennia, and some of that is out of necessity, but with the likes of Belisarius Call pushing things forward, who knows what they will develop or rediscover. Such innovation though only comes from individuals who have vast accumulations of knowledge. In broader terms the Imperium and humanity as a whole is just not set up to achieve any forward technological advancement. It lacks the means to communicate and pass on knowledge, it lacks basic understandings of science and it fears even attempting to do so. The only ones capable of achieving forward progress are the Mechanicus and they fear blind advancement as much as your average Imperial citizen, although likely for entirely different reasons. And this is not to mention the fact that beyond the basic workhorse tools of tanks and weapons used in the Imperium, advanced tech will either not exist in the form of STC hard copies, or it's just completely beyond the comprehension of even the Mechanicus. But most critical though is in understanding why the knowledge of mankind has been so heavily curtailed. And this lies in the fact that the Mechanicus wield immense power and even arrogance in their belief of their own mission, their own goals and objectives. The Mechanicus can often be given even more awed respect than Imperial officials because of the weight of importance that they carry. And this is entirely down to the understanding of all that just like the Navigators, they are absolutely essential for the continued existence of humanity. They protect mankind from itself and the dangers its ability to develop technology represents. They seek the dawn of an age where man and machine are enmeshed. They seek to crush any opponents who oppose their ideals or dare to enact unsanctioned research and experimentation or worse, creative discovery. 
The guardians of knowledge within the cult Mechanicus will go to any lengths to defend any threat to their supreme monopoly on technology. They would murder anyone who is a threat or who infringes upon their beliefs, and they would without hesitation silence those within the Imperium who would speak out against them through either literal or societal sabotage, possibly even lobotomizing those who committed the worst infractions before disappearing them to some irrelevant backwater to live out their days as a vegetable-like drone. And there's a specific and distinct reason as to why research and innovation does not occur widely within the Imperium. And that reason is simply that the Mechanicus says that this is the way things are. They will do anything to prevent it being otherwise. They seek the ultimate preservation of holy knowledge. They wield their own army, separate entirely from the Imperium of Man. They control the world-ending titans, and they wouldn't hesitate to use those to protect their vast vaults of knowledge. Not to mention who knows what mysteries or dangerous pieces of archaeotech they have uncovered over millennia. The Mechanicus would simply not allow any to challenge them, even if that were to mean outright war. The only one who could truly turn the tide of humanity's miserable stagnation is, of course, the Omnisire.